Have you ever done a one name study? Well, if not, today you need to learn about them so you can get started. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics and we're gonna talk with Paul House of the Guild of One Name Studies about how to get started with these one name studies and then he's gonna tell you about the study he has been doing. Hi Paul, how are you? I'm pretty good, thanks Devin. I just uh, finished giving my own presentation on my own one name study, so uh, a bit relaxed now. Uh, absolutely, once we finish speaking, it's always a good time to chill and relax and enjoy a conference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's jump right in and give five tips on how to get started and be successful. Okay, very first thing, you need to go to the Guild website. Okay, the Guild uh, the website. The Guild website is www.one-name.org. And if you go to that button marked Home and click on that, you'll find a section underneath called Starting Your One Name Study. Okay. And there are four or five very helpful pages there. So Wonderful. that's step one. Uh, step two, don't take on too much too soon. Don't try and shoot for the moon, do little <laughs> bits in increments, see how you get on. You might not like it. Okay. Yeah. Step three, do what you enjoy. Okay. So there's a whole range of people in the guild. So we've got people that like collecting data. We've got people who like reconstructing families. We have one name studies that are almost solely focused on DNA. Okay. And, you know, there's a few oddballs and so on in the background, but, but basically do what you enjoy and you will have much more fun. Okay. Step four. Four. Tell other people. Okay. Tell How do we tell doing. them about what we're doing? Well, if you join the Guild of One Name Studies, uh, you have to make a couple of commitments, which perhaps we can talk about, but um, what's the point of doing a One Name Study if you're not going to tell anybody that you're doing it? <laughs> Absolutely. So the Guild gives you a free Facebook page, uh, sorry, a free web page. Okay that you can use. We call it a profile page. You can put text and pictures on there, maybe a link to your website if you have one. Okay. If you don't have one, the Guild will give you one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, we have well over 200 studies okay. with websites on the Guild maintained website right now. Wonderful. And you just mentioned commitments. What are the commitments you want? Okay, the two commitments. Uh, number one, uh, you have to reply to all inquiries. Okay. But number two is the, perhaps the more important one. You make a commitment to collect all the instances of that name that you can find anywhere okay. in the world. Oh, anywhere yeah. in the world. Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. One name studies are by definition global. Okay. The thing is, though, that we don't tell you where to start. So if you just want to start in your own state or your own country okay. or county, uh, you can do that. Um, ultimately, your aim must be to be global, but you can do it whatever speed you want. Okay, I like that. Good. So, for instance, what my uh, maiden name is Geisler, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of them were in Columbus, Ohio. So I can start right. there and Absolutely. find all of the Geislers in Columbus, and then I can maybe sure. expand to the county yep. and then the Ohio, and, and as people tell me about Geislers from all there around the go. world. But they won't tell you if you don't tell them you're there. There you go. Right. Yes. All that right, was, I got it. That was why it. step four was there. So there you go. Step five, preserve your work. Okay. So the Guild offers you lots of options to do that. Uh, if you have a Guild website, that website will be preserved when you leave the Guild. Okay. It'll be preserved forevermore. If somebody else comes along and takes your study over, they can have a second website with that name. Your, the work you did is still there. Nice. Um, secondly, um, you can um, put your data in a special section on offer from Family Search. Okay. So if you've, been, you've obviously been to Family Search. I do. I'm a family his, Family yeah. Search fanatic. So I know lots of us prefer to search for records, but okay. just occasionally you might need a hint. You go to the genealogy section. Oh yes. All right. The Guild of One Name Studies has a special corner in that genealogy section where there's about a million people um, all together whose records are in there. The, the family good folks at Family Search say that uh, you know they have high confidence in the in the diligence and the quality of the work done by guild members nice. so they gave us a, a section there and church members can even use the references the, f the personal references of the people there as sources in their in their own family history work that is exciting yeah, now i've great. been in the genealogy section but i missed that one so oh. that sounds okay. like a it's video i'm gonna have to do as a follow-up for sure one. it's in alphabetical order starts with g so you'll find it easily enough <laughs> wonderful yeah. wonderful so what's the benefit before we jump in and tell mm -hmm. you about your story yeah. what are the benefits of a one name study and and exactly oh. like what you said we can do a lot of things mm -hmm. but 
What are you doing? Is it really just looking for all the Geislers around the world? Yeah, in my case, it's looking for all the houses around the world. Okay. Um, I started doing my one-name study because I got stuck. Okay. I, um, my dad obviously was a house. I got stuck around 1800 in my home city with, with uh, at the houses on his line. But up his line, there's a maternal grandmother named house. So he okay. had two lines. My mother has another one. They're all from the same county. And I thought, okay, oh, no. well, if only I collect all the information on houses in Norfolk. Yeah, I might be able to break through my brick walls. Yeah. Okay. And how did That's, that work that out for A lot of people do that kind of thing. Okay. So they're really doing an element of a one-name study without doing it okay. in full. Um, well, it worked out pretty well. Uh, two things happened. I published an article in the Norfolk uh, Family History Society magazine uh -huh. telling them what I was going to do. And I had a reply from that from a gentleman from the Guild saying, hey, why don't you just do the whole world? And, you know, <laughs> Were so you we overwhelmed? Thought about it. We thought about it, but, but the, the, the problem is people move around, you know? Yes, absolutely. And so if you're trying to trace families that came from Norfolk, you're going to go all around the world anyway. And when I looked at the numbers, there are about half as many houses in the U.S. as there are in the U.K., so it seemed like doable. And I talked with my cousin because we're doing it together, okay. and uh, we decided to take on the world. There you go. Yep. And so um, how much success have you had? Were you able to connect them? Oh, are you still well, working on it? After 10 years, I've gone back one generation on one of those lines. <laughs> Mind you, the other one, one of the others goes back to the 1500, so it's not too bad. No, it's not too um, bad. But in the last 10 years, we've given a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. We have a website, housefamilies.com. Absolutely. That's H O W E S families.com. And um, we now have almost 144,000 people in reconstructed families on our site. That is wonderful. We have a team of seven or eight people working on it for in lots of different countries. And uh, you know, people write in and go, well, the quality of your research is great. Mm -hmm. We try and record every single detail on every person. Anytime, you know, whenever we come across a new record, uh -huh. we know, uh, census, for example, we note the name, the date of birth, where they're from, the occupation, where they are. Um, so every time. Nice. So that's a lot of detail on a lot of people. That is, that is. So I don't know if anybody out there has ever looked at their GED file and tried to open it with a text editor. Our <laughs> GED file is over 5 million lines. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to print that. <laughs> just <laughs> want to not. find a little segment here and there. No, that absolutely. That is fantastic. So tell us more about the Guild and what it does for people. Okay. Um, well, if you take on a one-name study, I've already told you the two things you, you're committing to. Mm -hmm. But there are a huge amount of benefits from them. I think most members get most value from interacting with other members. Okay. So we have a Facebook group with 750 or so people in it. We have an open group for the outside world where mm -hmm. there's about 4,000 people signed up. Okay. Anybody can ask any question of any other member and get a reply or several replies within 24 hours. Oh, wow. We still do old tech. We have an email list. <laughs> We also have a forum on our website for okay. members to interact on stuff that's a bit more detailed than you can really use Facebook effectively for. Right, absolutely. Um, uh, for my sins, I got to marry, manage the special project being done by Guild members to celebrate our 40th anniversary. Okay. And that's a, a study into the surname Ruby. Ruby, okay. So we Why have Ruby? Ruby anniversary, 40 years. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and the Ruby clan is absolutely, uh, absolutely fascinating because it, it goes back to Switzerland. We've got people in Denmark, um, the US, obviously Ireland. They're scattered around the world. A um, few very interesting stories like uh, one of the descendants of the Swiss clan mm -hmm. um, in uh, Pennsylvania at the age of four shot and killed his mother. <gasps> I know. Oh, yeah. I'm guessing it was accidental. I hope it wasn't uh, intentional. No, I'm afraid it wasn't. She um, reprimanded this young kid uh -oh. for playing with matches. And they were out in the yard, and he went into the kitchen, climbed up the dresser, grabbed the gun, and then shot his mum in the back of the neck. And it's absolutely a horrible story. Oh, my gosh. But, but it, it uh, you know, brings home all of family history is there. He's only yes. four. Yes. He subsequently threatened the coroner with a knife. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, did but, he but just live a life of crime for now? No, now? the amazing no? thing is, in 1930 <laughs> census, there he is with his family. <laughs> 1940 census, there he is with his ma family. 
Um, he joined the Navy, had a successful career in the, in the, in the Navy, and lived a perfectly normal life after that. Oh, my goodness. And it's incredible. That all the stories. A, a man named William Ruby mm -hmm. was digging a grave in central London in 1816. Uh -huh. Now, they had a bit of a problem, which will become apparent when I tell you that the ground collapsed in on this guy. Uh oh he was 26 feet down <gasps> oh digging my gosh. a grave. London had a huge problem okay. with um, the number of people dying in the small areas of the graveyard, so they had to go down to find somewhere, find somewhere to bury their dead. <laughs> okay. And it was another 15 years before the, the Corporation of London realized that they had a, such a huge problem, and that they then developed seven huge grave sites out in the okay. suburbs. Okay. So there, it's actually, you know, you learn a lot of social history doing oh, yes. family history. Social history is the best. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, question. Yeah. Was he buried alive or did they, he get out? Oh, th no, they, he, was, he died down the bottom of this grave. They did get him out. Oh, and goodness. Unfortunately, we can't trace the man. We know he had a wife and three children. Oh, goodness. But we can't find a, an appropriate marriage of William Ruby anywhere in England. So oh, far. Oh, no. So far. Oh, no. Well, did but he go to Gretna Green? Uh, I doubt it. Most people do. <laughs> or is that way, yeah. way back there, just in romance novels? Anyway, I'm telling you stories, but, <laughs> but the real story here is that we've got 35 guild members mm -hmm. collaborating together on a one-name study, mm -hmm. uh, and to, we're going to finish in September, mm -hmm. and so far we have 12,500 people in reconstructed families just in that study. That's amazing. And to find that, you go to Ruby dot one dash name dot net okay and that's one of the 200 so websites being preserved by the guild nice. and it's a good example i hope of what guild members can do absolutely i like that power of working together yeah. on a project yeah. because i just think you know if if people work together instead of just let me just say, so there's a lot of people who keep trying to climb their line, but their line has been picked over so often. But here's a way where you can keep looking for your surname yep. and find new discoveries. Well, absolutely. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of researchers do that anyway. I was looking in the Family History Library a couple of days ago mm -hmm. at a family named Howes from Clark County, Mississippi. And I'm trying to sort out all the family. So I, there's a book there with a bunch of probate records mm -hmm. in. And I looked up all the probate records and some old records from the Works Progress Administration. You know, they did a little county history. And I'm able to reconstruct a family sensibly from that before nice. census records began. Nice. But I've, I've got some houses that, that don't fit in. <laughs> you know, so uh, it raised my curiosity. How, how am I going to fit those people into my study as well? I like it. I like it. Well, how can people get to know more about the One Name Study as well as your research project? Right. Okay. To so go to the Guild of One Name Studies website at www.one-name.org. And there you type in your surname into the surname search box. You may find that there's a Guild member studying your surname already. Okay. And don't worry, it might even be a foreign name. We have 100 members studying names originating from outside the British Isles. Okay. So don't forget those. Um, if there's a Guild member studying your surname, there's a little button there. You click that. You're set up with an email. You can send them a query, send them some help so you can help them. Okay. Maybe they can help you. They may okay. already know. Okay. And if your surname is an understudy, hey, give it a thought. Well, all of the links that, you, that Paul shared with us in this video will be in the description section. So be sure to check out all of those links and consider doing a one name study or contributing to a one name study that is already under work. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Devin. It's a pleasure.